okay? All you freshmen out there, dang it, yes, I know, my phone is dying. Hey guys, what's up? Uh, today, for many of us, was our first day of school down here in Texas. Due to the traumatic events of Hurricane Harvey, my school canceled Monday, which was yesterday, because of the probability that our river would flood, and when our river floods, it floods. Um, surprisingly, it didn't. Um, however, Hurricane Harvey did send very powerful winds, and I have this tree right in front of my apartment, and the very first night that we got hit, the tree blew over, and it's still there, and it's... Today's Tuesday and it blew over what, Friday morning, Saturday morning, it's been a while. And um, so for me, it's technically my first last day. I don't graduate this fall semester, but I do graduate in the spring. So it's my last first day for the fall semester. Next fall, I will not be returning. And it's very melancholy, but you, you kind of realize that an era of your life is ending. I graduate in the spring and then I'm off to get my teacher certification and then I'll be teaching and living and being a true adult. But it's my last year in college. By the this time next year, I will have a bachelor's degree in psychology. Now, I plan on getting my master's one day, but that's not gonna happen immediately. So in two years, in two years, that's my goal, I will have a teacher certification and I will hopefully be in Virginia. I want to go there, I wanna teach there. And so in essentially two years, I will no longer be a student. I will be a full grown career building adult. And it's very overwhelming when you come to this realization because you realize that I'm not in elementary school anymore. I'm not middle school, I'm not in high school, I'm not, it's not my first last day of my senior year in high school, you know, but when you get to college, it's a whole nother ball game. My freshman year, I lived in, uh, it was called, it was Elliot, and it was one of the more, you know, like the least expensive halls, and it was kind of like the bottom of the boat, and I met one of my good friends. Uh, unfortunately, due to conflicting schedules, she's an art major, so a lot of her lab times are three hours long, and our schedules, and then we both became resident assistants, and it just got complicated to meet up with each other. But I met, I met my best friend. Uh, her name was Bronwyn, and she never gave up on me. What, I mean, the fact that she was there for me, for everything. Um, my first day as an RA was terrible <laughs> that first week. I had a, I had residents already hating me and it was my first week. It was the spring semester, so school had already started, you know, in the fall and they had already had an RA previous to me, but I was excited and then all these things happened which I'll talk about in another video. Anyway, Bronwyn, she was there for me when all that stuff was going down and she always knew what to say and sometimes it was extremely blunt but everybody needs somebody like that in their life to where it's so blunt but it's because you know that they really care about you and okay moving on um for some of us it's your first day of your freshman year in college and a lot of things are going to happen to you you might overspend your budget if you have one you might have to get a job and end up failing a class because of work or stress because of work and, and having to study and I want you to know that it's okay it's okay if you have to drop out for a semester take a break breathe figure out what you want to do who you want to be what kind of person you want to be and then go back it's okay to make a C if you used to be an A student in high school high school is the kindergarten of college okay so it's so many people are like, oh, I made A's and I was the number one or top 10 in my high school. And honey, that's going to change. You have to study every day and take notes and pay attention if you want to do well. And I don't mean like take notes and then just study them a couple of days before the exam. I mean every day. Devote 30 minutes at least per class to write your notes, go over them, and do them again. You know, there's studying and then there's studying until you die. 
you have to have sleep to function. All of the jokes and the irony and everything of college and coffee and missing sleep, don't don't take that seriously, okay? You have to sleep, you have to rest, you have to give your body that break. Otherwise your brain is going to crack and you will have a mental breakdown and cry and end up in a fetal position on the ball, on the floor, in a ball on the floor, crying and calling your best friend to come get you and then her taking you to get donuts or ice cream or something. Because <laughs> and this is from an experience, okay? My freshman year, I had science class after science after science and I was doing bad because I kept thinking, if I don't study, I'm going to fail. If I don't study, I'm going to fail. There's different ways to study, okay? The whole point of your freshman year in college is to not only get into college, start your career, figure out what you want to do, but it's to find the best way to study and live that fits you. You can't spend every waking moment that you are not in class or at work studying. You can't do that. You need to take at least one day off of the week, whether that's hopefully trying to get a day off work, which... <laughs> Let's face it, it's really hard. But take one day where you're not thinking about school. You're not studying for anything. You're not reading up on chapters. You're not doing homework. You know, do your homework ahead of time or later. You need to do this. Trust me. All you freshmen out there, heed my advice, okay? Take it from a senior who's in her last year. You need to take a break. Go to Walmart. Target, whatever, leave your wallet at home if you're like me and tend to spend money on things you don't need. Just go to go somewhere, go to a store and just walk around. Go to Walmart, look at the fish. Um, go to PetSmart, your local pet store, and look at the dogs and the cats and the smells of, like, go to a clothing store if that's like your kind of thing where you like the smell of clothes. Just do something. Get out of your room, go walk around your campus, go to the library, check out an old book. One time I got the Magic Treehouse books. Does anybody remember those? I would rent one and just sit and read it just to kind of give my mind a break. But that's something that you need to do. Oh my gosh. So the person that lives above me, I guess they don't realize how heavy their feet are. <laughs> and it's driving me crazy. And I don't, when you're an RA, there's two things that nobody really tells you. One, you develop a fear of people knocking on your door. People knock on your door, you stop what you're doing, you be quiet, you turn off your, everything. It's like you know that they know that you're there because they probably heard your Netflix or your music or you, they could see your shadow under the door, keep that in mind. But it's like every time somebody knocks on your door, you're like... <laughs> and then um, you get social anxiety from it because as an RA, you have residents that are expecting you to be nice to, you know, smile and stuff. I mean, that's at least for me. And so it was, it got so exhausting having to pretend to be happy all the time and calm and collected when you're internally freaking out because you don't really know what's going on. Like if a tornado warning goes on, but you don't know if you should tell your residents to get in the stairwell or not. So you do it anyway and then end up freaking everybody. Anyway. So the knocking on the door thing and then not wanting to be social anymore because you've done it, you know, you're an RA when you live in the hall and then you go to class and then you're a student. You know, there's no you time unless you go home for the weekend or something. At least that's how it was for me, which is another thing that I'm going to talk about in the video about the RA job thing. Um, that's why I haven't gone up there and talked to them yet. Anyway, um, I was talking about studying last and now I'm going to talk about major change if you nowadays people in society are expecting you to know what you want to do by the time you're in middle school at least that's how it was at my school district you your junior year of high school they pulled you aside and they said what major are you declaring and what college are you going to by the by the time they asked me that and pulled me aside in junior year I hadn't even taken my SATs yet so of course I hadn't even thought about what colleges I wanted to go to or what I wanted to do and I just kind of grabbed on to the closest thing and that was marine biology and that's not how it's gonna be for everybody some people are gonna have multiple schools that they really want to go to and at the end I'm gonna tell you right now it's down to scholarships what school offers you the most money what school has that connection that you want to feel for me everybody here was so nice hi kitty Ginger has graced us with her presence in this video today. Now you get good luck. Anyway, you want to pick a university that feels like home, whether that's in another state or just 
five minutes down the road. Find one that, f okay, find one that fits you and makes you feel the most comfortable. Pick a college where you feel a connection, whether it's God, if you believe in God, or just kind of a spiritual wholesomeness that you feel at peace. I felt at peace and for me, it was God telling me that's where I need to be. Um, and I just took a look at the view and I was like, this is where I'm going. Like I didn't have to apply, I didn't even apply. <laughs> She's looking at, I don't know, it was just home. Now back to the major changes, because I was saying this because you don't want to pick a school just because it has this great program that is the major that you're deciding now. I have changed my major three times. Or one, I came in as a theater, theater major, that's one, okay? I came to orientation and changed it to marine biology, that's two. And then I became an RA and I learned that my passion was people and the mind behind it. And then I changed it to psychology. So that's my third choice, you know? And another reason kind of why I changed is because I took, um, out of the three courses that we were allowed to choose to take for a pre uh, requirement, I chose psychology. And I was really good at it. I made an A. It was my first A ever my freshman year. And... I don't know I was good at it and I loved it and that's what you want you want something that you're good at and it's easy to make the grades for you because you love learning it a lot of people don't understand that the first few classes are weed out classes that's why they're freshman courses for me um, it was chemistry one and two and then the first two biologies that I had to take and I did like uh, <laughs> I made C's like there were maybe one B but that's because it wasn't a major course it was like writing or um, history so I did psychology and I was good at it and I, I loved it and you know I was like you know what I think I need to do this and it was the end of my sophomore year where I learned this so going into my junior year I changed my major and my point is it's okay to change your major you know it's okay <laughs> the whole point of going to college is discovering who you are and learning what you're good at you could be a math major okay and I don't know why you'd want to do it but some people out there love math I have friends like that and then you join a photography club on campus just a local organization you know that photography and then you discover how good you are at it and how much you enjoy it you have the right to change your major from math to photography. You can do that. It's okay. All right? Don't listen to what your parents say. You're not allowed to do this. And if they discourage it, tough. It's your life. Do what you want, you know? you. It's your life, your destiny. I mean, most people say people who, in the long run, don't even use their major for their job. But I plan on using it. You know, I'm wanting to work with kids. And that's why I chose psychology and child development as my minor is because in order to teach a kid, you want to know how their brain works and how their development is because you might think and expect them to be a, a certain level of maturity. But if you don't understand how their developmental stages work and their brain and how they connect their feelings to their behaviors, to their actions, then how are you going to teach them? And it's the same thing with if you decide to be a history major and you want to teach history. Well, what if you end up being terrible at history and then you end up hating it and you're like, I don't want to do this. But then you excel in your science classes, you know? It's okay to change your major. And the thing is, each class, like each classification, each major has so many things. But you get what I'm trying to say, all right? Now, this video is running a little long, so I got to cut it short. Um, I really wanted to just discuss with you guys how great this experience is, okay? And I have grown so much. I've become more extroverted. I've stood up, I start standing up for myself, you know, standing up for what I believe in. I'm more free-spirited. I'm more knowledgeable. And it, I mean, the list just goes on and on, you know, the stereotypical stuff. But the thing is, if you don't go into college expecting these things to happen, they won't. You have to go in with an open mind saying, at the end of these four or so or less years, I'm going to be a different person. Your whole life, from kindergarten to 12th grade or whatever grade that you ended up deciding you didn't, you know, school-wise, you've been surrounded by people 
forming you, shaping you, modeling them, modeling you into who they want you to be. College or, I mean, even if you decide not to go to college and you hit this milestone in your life where you have to start sitting down and making career adult choices, you need to figure out what direction you want to go. It's your turn to shape and model your own self, you know. Um, but I wish you all the best, whether this is your first day of college or school or high school or your last day, your last first day, you know what I'm saying. Just do what you want, be who you want to be, love yourself and do good, all right? Have confidence and faith because whatever it is that you feel like is getting tough, tough it out, you know, punch through the walls to, to get to where you want to be. It's okay. So I wish you all the best of luck and I love you all. All right. If there's not anybody else in the world that believes in you, know that I do. All right. I'll see you guys in the next video. All right. Bye. Like what you see? Click on the left to subscribe to my channel and click on the right to see more videos. I'll see you guys in the next video. Yeah.